But if you got your Bible, Romans 8, verse 26, Acts chapter number 1. Romans 8 is all about life through the Holy Spirit. Walking through life through the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit guiding, the Holy Spirit directing. We've talked a lot in this series about not going through life on our own, not trying to solve everything on our own, but going through life, leaning on the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so it talks a lot about that. Then one of my favorite verses, one of every Christian's favorite verse, really, Romans 8, 31, comes up a few verses after what we read today. And in Romans 8 and verse 31, it says, What shall we say then if God is for us who can be against us. In Romans 8, 31, it talks about all of this strength that we have. But in Romans 8, 26, it also talks about our weakness. See, our weakness is what we don't like to talk about a lot of times. We like to hide behind certain things and not reveal the weakness that we have in our lives. But in Romans 8, 26, it talks about this weakness that we have, but it also talks about how we are able to get the strength that we find talked about in Romans 8, 31, where we're able to be confident. I'm not afraid. What shall we say if God is for me? Who should be against me? How do we get that confidence when I have my weakness? How many would be honest in the building and acknowledge I have weakness? I have weakness. If you're joining us online, type in the comments, I have weakness. I have weakness because we all do. But it talks about how we are able to overcome that weakness in Romans 8, verse 26. It says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. It doesn't say that he leaves us to figure it out on our own. It says he helps us. He's there to help us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Now look over at Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Our second and final verse of the day says, but you will receive power. Somebody say power. Power. I love that word, power. You will receive power. It doesn't say when you're good enough. It doesn't say when you have all the answers. It doesn't say when you're stronger yourself. It says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of of the earth. In other words, Romans 8, 26 and Acts 1, they say a life without the Holy Spirit is a life without power. And we all want power. We all want to be strong in our lives. We all want all these things. But on our own, it says you might be okay. Like the text today is like, listen, you may be okay without the Holy Spirit, You might be strong in some areas, but the only way to have total strength and total power in your life is through the Holy Spirit. The only way to have total strength, because the reality is we all have weaknesses. Doesn't matter what title's in front of your name, at the end of your name. We were back before church, back in the MVP care room, and we have a dude who's on the worship team who's a lawyer now. Through COVID, he became a lawyer. Come on, somebody. And so he's like back there, and he's like talking all this lawyer gibberish. And I'm like, don't act like you think you're better than me because I didn't go to law school, and I don't know the fancy terms. And so he's like saying something. I'm like, sounds made up. Sounds made up. Because, right, because you got to hate if somebody's at a little higher level than you are. But it doesn't matter what title is before somebody, after somebody. Doesn't matter if somebody grew up in church or not. Doesn't matter if somebody went to Bible college or not. None of these things matter. We all have weaknesses. And the only solution is the Holy Spirit. Now, part of the solution is community. Let me say that. Because while I may be strong in an area that you're weak in, you may be strong in an area that I'm weak in. And so God puts people in our lives. He leads people through the Holy Spirit into our lives that are strong in areas that we are weak. That's why the enemy loves to get us into isolation. He loves to get us away from community because he knows that if we get on our own and we find our weakness, that our weakness is going to beat us down until we just don't think we can make it anymore. But we get around people who are strong where we're weak. Come on then we realize that we can make it through this thing. But the real thing that changes it all is the Holy Spirit. 
When the Holy Spirit is leading our lives, he brings total strength that cannot be taken, that cannot be shaken, that cannot go away. And he is waiting on our acknowledgement to say, listen, I don't have the answer. I don't know. And I need some help. So I want to talk to you this morning as we close out the series, Goosebumps, on this subject, help wanted. Help wanted. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for today, and we just thank you uh, that we have this opportunity that we don't ever want to take for granted again, to gather together here, to gather together online. Lord, I pray that you would help us in these next few moments to hear from you, to have hearts that are receptive to you, open to you, Lord, I pray in these next 20 minutes that you would help our lives to be forever impacted through what you have to say to us. I pray that you would help nobody to see or hear from me, but to see and to hear from you. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Now, this past week, I was uh, doing something kind of strange that I've never really noticed before as I've gotten older. I started to reminisce about back in the day. Anybody, you know, you ever gotten to that point where it's like, wow, like, I'm so, I'm at an age now where I have a back in the day. Like your parents used to talk about, I remember back in the day when gas was 10 cents, you know? And like you hear all these things and you're like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard, right? But I was realizing like, I'm at that point where if I were to go back to the school I graduated from in high school and start talking about some of the things that I went through, they would look at me like I was crazy. Like if I said, Hey, I had to go to the office to call my mom because I didn't have a cell phone. They'd be like, what do you mean you didn't have a cell phone? What is life without cell phones? Is that a real thing? Like, there's things like that that we had before. I was thinking this week when the, the uh, storms came through and they canceled school, back when I was in school, back in the day... We literally had hail busting the windows. And you know what they did? They told us, go sit in the hallway and put a book over your head. <laughs> like, but they don't, they don't see that now because like school gets canceled. So it's like th there's a back in the day. And I was thinking about back in the day, the, the teachers that I liked and the teachers that I didn't. Because this love of people has grown in my life as I've grown. Like God's helped me grow in maturity as he's taken my hair all at the same time. And so I realized, like, there's, there's teachers I liked, teachers I didn't. There's, there's classes I liked, classes I didn't. People I liked, people that I didn't, and, and, and all this stuff in my life. And one of the classes that I liked was physical education, PE, right? Now, I don't know if you had PE, but I loved me some PE because I was good at sports. I wasn't the best at any sport, but I was good enough. You know, like, I was good enough to hold my own. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't getting picked last, right? So I liked P.E. because I wasn't the smartest, but I could hang in P.E. But what I didn't like in P.E. was this thing called the physical fitness test. <laughs> so I didn't like the physical fitness test because it starts to reveal your weaknesses. See, and when you're playing sports, you can kind of play to the strengths and all these things. But when it's physical fitness test time, anybody, did you do physical fitness test or was this just my, my little private school that I grew up in? Yeah, physical fitness test. I even thought about at 31 trying to do it all over again. But I decided not to because I was like, why go through unnecessary torture? Like at this point, it's torture. But in physical fitness test, you, you get judged and you get told you're presidential, you're national, or you're something that I don't even remember what it's called, like satisfactory or participation or whatever it may be. Like back in the day, participation was not a good thing. Now it's like, I got a trophy. But back in the day, you didn't want to get participation. You wanted to be presidential. And so I was always national, always, because I could do the mile, I could do the shuttle run, I could do the sit-ups, but I could never do the pull-ups because it was biased against people who are weak and have no muscles. And so I could never do the pull-up. So I did this thing to get national where you just, you have to jump up above the bar and you have to hold on with your chin above the bar and you have to just hold there for like 30 seconds or some amount of time. And that's what I always did because I could never do the pull-ups until my senior year. And I was like, listen, I told Coach Bailey, I said, listen, I'm not doing the pull-ups. I'm not even trying. 
because it was embarrassing. You know, like it's humiliating because I did this thing where I like looked like I was riding a bicycle. As I'm trying to pull up, my legs are going like this. And it looks like I'm trying to ride my way up to be able to pull up, and it does nothing to help at all. And then I'd get to where I'm just like kicking my legs like this, just trying to get a pull up in. And I told him, it's my senior year, and I'm not going to look like a buffoon before I leave and graduate. And he said, what kind of senior just quits and doesn't even try? Is that really what you want your classmates to remember you by? I'm like, what did you just say to me? Like, who do you think you are? So I was like, fine, I'll try it. So I jump up there, and I'm like, I'm going to do one. That's it. I did one. And then I did two. And then I did three. And then four. And then five. I got all the way to 21 of those jokers. I don't even remember what presidential was, but guess what? Your boy got presidential, and that's all that matters. I don't remember what the number was. I just kept going. But it was crazy, and I've never done it again. If I do a pull-up now, I might get two. I've never, done it, I've never done it since. I tried. Again, I got a big head, and I was like, hey, let's go do a pull-up competition. I did two, and I was like, well, this is embarrassing. I started a competition. I cannot win. Because I just, it was in that moment, I randomly got this spurt of unexpected strength, totally unexpected strength. And I was thinking back to that, and I realized this is exactly what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. He brings unexpected strength. He brings us strength in the moments when we feel like we're weak. He brings us strength in the moments when we should be weak. He brings us strength in the moments when everybody else is watching, waiting for us to fall, waiting for us to just try to participate, just try to jump up and hold on for dear life. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. But the Holy Spirit comes in and he says, no, you're not going to just get above water, but you're going through this thing with some strength, with some power that you didn't even know existed. Existed. brings unexpected strength and that's what it says in Romans 8 26 it says in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness the spirit helps us in our weakness the moments when we feel weak we are strong the moments when we don't think that we can do it we are strong the moments when we don't know how when or if We're ever going to make it through this thing. The Holy Spirit is there to bring strength in the midst of weakness. We talked last last week a lot about the fruits of the Spirit and how a lot of people think that all these things are the Holy Spirit that aren't even the Holy Spirit because they don't have fruit. And one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is being patient, is being long-suffering, is being willing to, to have the joy, to have the peace in the midst of it all when you don't know how you're going to do it, to continue to push through and to say, I know that the strength is coming from somewhere. I know the strength is coming from somewhere. And I love the way that it says it in Romans eight twenty six because he says the Spirit helps us in our weakness. In our weakness. That, that's major. So massive, it's a massive indication of how the Holy Spirit helps us. Because there's two different reasons why. First of all, it says he helps us in our weakness, which means the Holy Spirit is not waiting for you to be perfect until he steps in. The Holy Spirit is not waiting for you to have all the answers until he steps in. He's not waiting for you to put everything together before he steps in. We tend to think that we got to have it all figured out before the Holy Spirit's ever going to come help us walk through life. We tend to think that we got to have it all figured out before we're ever going to find the answers, before the Holy Spirit's ever going to show up. And the Holy Spirit's saying, I'm not waiting for you to get it all figured out before I show up. I'm not waiting for you not to have any weakness until I show up. I'm here to help you in the weakness. I'm looking for some people who have some weakness. Is there anybody here today or online that would admit, I'm weak? I'm weak. I've got some weakness. I'm not as strong as I thought I was. I know know when I graduated high school, went into college, grown through life, I thought I was grown and I'm strong. I'm not as strong as I thought that I was. I think of anything that this year has done that's helped us realize on our own, we're weak. We're weak sauce. I mean, truly, like, we're online, type in the comments, I'm weak. I'm weak, because here in the building, I'm going to make them say it. Say, I'm weak. I'm weak. On our own, we're weak. 
And I know that you're like, man, this is just what I came to church to hear is that I'm weak. Thank you for this encouraging word. But here's the good news is it's not up to you. It's not about who you are. It's about who the Holy Spirit is working through you and being willing to allow him to bring his strength into your weakness. What we have to understand is it's okay to be weak. It's just not okay not to acknowledge that you're weak because it limits what the Holy Spirit is able to do. It limits him being able to come into our lives in a way like only he can come and to bring the strength that we want him to bring. The first thing is like, he's not waiting on you to be perfect. It says the Spirit helps us in our weakness, in our weakness. The second thing I need you to see in that is that it's in your weakness. In other words, the Holy Spirit, hear me on this, will meet you exactly where you are at. He will meet you exactly where you're at. He will meet you in your weakness. He will meet you in your mess. He will meet you when you just made a mistake that you swore you were never going to make again. You were at church last Sunday. You tuned in last Sunday, and you prayed, and you cried out, God, I'm never doing this again. And then the temptation hit this week, and you just didn't know how you could handle it, and you gave into it. And now you're in the guilt and the condemnation of all these things. And the Holy Spirit is there saying, listen, I'm still here to help you. When Monday comes, when Tuesday comes, when you're not in this bubble of church and you're out having to live what you've heard. Because we have a lot of hearing Christians and not a lot of doing Christians. But when you're no longer just hearing and you get called on to do it, And you're like, I don't have the strength that just the temptation is too strong. The bottle is there. They're looking good in that dress. And they're not my spouse. You can call on the strength of the Holy Spirit to help you in the midst. We think that we got to get to a point where I'm not even tempted by these things. I don't even want to look at these things. No, the Holy Spirit will help you in your life. Weakness, in the midst of your weakness, in that moment when you don't feel like you can get over it, when you don't feel like you can push through it, that's the best time for the Holy Spirit to show up and to shine in the midst of your weakness. In it. He will help you win it in it. You don't have, he's not sitting there in the moment when, when you don't have the answer, when you, you're upset about the mistake, when you're disappointed in yourself, in the moment when everybody else is avoiding you because your life is too messy right now, in the moment when everybody else is like, I don't want anything to do with them, that's when the Holy Spirit's there to bring the strength that you need. He's not showing up to judge you. He's not showing up to say, hey, listen, I need you to get your act together. Once you got your act together, call on me and I'll be back. No, the Holy Spirit said, hey, listen, I know that you're weak there. That's why I'm here. I know that you don't have the answer to overcome this. That's why I'm, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you in your weakness, in the midst of your weakness, so that I can help you play to your strength. See, what we don't realize is that we have a strength that we don't even understand that we have. We're looking for our strength in the world, but the Holy Spirit brings a strength that we're not even aware of if we're not relying on it. If we're so focused on trying to do what we can do and rely on our strength, we don't even understand that there's a strength that is greater through the Holy Spirit working through our lives. And the second thing I want you to see today is you've got to learn to play through your strength. Play through your strength. Play through your strength. Acts 1, 8, it says, but you will receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He said, you might be weak. You might be outnumbered. You might be overwhelmed. The odds might be stacked against you. But when the Holy Spirit shows up, you're strong. And the Holy Spirit shows up. You're no longer weak in that area. He brings a strength in your life in that area that you were once weak. The place that you were once weak, you are strong. You're no longer overwhelmed, but you're overwhelming what overwhelmed you. You're going to outnumber what outnumbered you. You're going to see that you can beat the odds. 
Who you've ever had the odds stacked against you? I mean, like, just there was no way. Anybody that would testify and acknowledge, there's been a time when the odds were stacked against me. I should have never had a chance. I should have never made it out. There should have never been anything great to come out of it. I should have never been able to make it over that thing. But something came into my life, and I couldn't explain it. I couldn't even tell you now how it happened. But all I know is something took over in my life because I surrendered to God, and I said, I can't do it, and I need some help. And the Holy Spirit showed up, and he brought me through that thing. But not only did he bring me through that thing, but he brought me to a greater place than I ever could have imagined. Because when he shows up, he brings strength. But so often we're playing to our weakness. What would happen if instead of hiding behind the insecurity of our weakness, we started walking in the authority of the strength that comes from the Holy Spirit? What would happen if, if instead of being so consumed with our weakness, let me just give you a personal testimony. One of my greatest weaknesses growing up and even when I first started in ministry, one of my greatest weaknesses was people pleasing. People pleasing. Wanted everybody to like me to where it became so much about them liking me instead of pointing them to him. Do you realize that when you become so consumed with trying to correct your weakness yourself, you always get it wrong? And that you end up hurting what God is wanting to do instead of helping? What would happen if instead of hiding behind the weakness of our insecurity, we got to the point where we said, I'm not insecure about my weakness anymore because I'm not even focused on that. I'm walking in the power and the authority that comes from the strength that can only come from the Holy Spirit in my life. Yeah, I made some mistakes when I was younger. Yeah, I made some mistakes, let's be honest, last week, but I'm not worried about that because I'm walking in a strength that is greater. I'm not hiding behind the weakness that is in my life. I'm not hiding behind the insecurity of being weak in that area, but I'm stepping through in authority and strength. Why do we tend to do this? Why why do we tend to, to magnify our weakness and minimize the ability of the Holy Spirit's strength in our lives? Why why do we maximize the effect of our weakness and minimize the strength of the Holy Spirit? Why do we think that our weakness is greater than what he can do? Why do we think that I can't do it because I've never been able to do it instead of understanding it wasn't for me to do on my own in the first place? It was never for me to handle in the first place, but it was for me to go through with the Holy Spirit. Got to play to our strength. I was watching God's team yesterday, last night actually, the Florida Gators, as they defeated Missouri. in a preparation for next week when they face a subpar Georgia team. And I was watching last night, and, and I'm going to be honest, right? Our offense is amazing this year. Our quarterback, for those of you who don't know this, which is probably literally everybody here and online because you're like, I don't care about Florida. Guess what I do? And I got the microphone. So our quarterback last night set the record in the SEC for the most touchdowns through four games. So like I said, our offense is all right. We're okay. But our defense is terrible. Truly, it's terrible. So they were talking before the game, and they were saying, listen, the keys to the game for the Gators is you got to keep your defense off the field. (laughs) Do not let the defense onto the field. You're like, how do you even do that? They said the offense has to have long, methodical drives. They need to take their time. And George, uh, Florida, whoo, I, the devil showed up for a minute. <laughs> Florida, Florida on their first drive took 12 plays and all this time off the clock. And they were like, that's what they got to do to win. They got to just take their time, keep the defense off the field, and they can win this thing. In other words, they were saying they need to play to their strength. They need to focus on where they're strong. Let their offense stay out on the field because if their defense is out there, they're going to be weak. Now, the fact that their offense was out on the field and they were playing to that strength does not mean they don't have a defense. Technically, we don't, but it doesn't mean that one doesn't exist on our team. It just means that that's not what is accentuated because we were playing to our strength. We weren't playing to our weakness 
We were playing to our strength. And I believe God was wanting to say to somebody today, you need to learn to play to your strength. Stop putting your weakness out there for everybody to see. Stop putting your weakness on parade and talking about your weakness and going in and giving in to your weakness. But start to play to your strength. I'm playing to the strength of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'm not playing to my weakness. I'm not focusing on my weakness. I'm not engaging with my weakness, but I'm going to play to my strength. I'm going to sit here and say, yeah, I might have been weak in that area, but that's not what I'm focusing on. I'm putting the strength out there. I'm putting the Holy Spirit on display. Sure, I have some weaknesses. We all do. All of us have weaknesses. I'm not saying that we deny that there's weaknesses. I'm just saying that we don't allow them to rule our lives. I'm not playing to this weakness. I'm going to play to my strength. Somebody say, play to your strength. I'm going to play to my strength. Because when we play to our strength, that's how we're able not to waste the power that God brings into our lives through the Holy Spirit. So many of us don't even understand the power that we have through the Holy Spirit. There are so many followers of Jesus walking around, talking about how good God is, but not living in his goodness. Talking about how great he is, but acting like he's too weak for everything. Talking about how God is greater than anything that could happen, but so stressed out about what's going to happen Tuesday night and Wednesday and the Thursday. I've heard more Christians talk about how scared they are of what's going to happen after the election, then I've heard people who don't profess Jesus. I've heard more followers of Jesus, let me be clear, talking about how scared they are if so-and-so is elected or so-and-so is elected. I've heard more Christians say that than people who don't even profess a relationship with Jesus. And those same Christians at the same time talking about how good God is and how he's greater and how he's been so good to me. And it's no wonder that there is a confusion in the world about what the church believes. Because we say that God is good and we say that God is great, but then we act like a man is greater. We got to get to a point. It's not even on my notes. Like, this is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. Online, we probably lost like 20 people just now. It's okay. The numbers are, boop, just went down. We got to get to a point where we're not so concerned with what happens in the world that we neglect what God is trying to do through us in a spiritual level, in a supernatural level, where we say, no matter what I face, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, I'm greater because of the strength of the Holy Spirit in my life. No man is going to dictate my life. No man is going to dictate who I am, what I can do. I've heard people say if so-and-so is elected, churches are getting shut down. No, because ain't no rock crying out in my place. And if 2020 has taught us anything, those of you who spent so many months at home, quarantine, those of you who are still quarantined, you've seen the Holy Spirit is not limited to a building. The Holy Spirit resides in here. That means wherever I go, I'm going to have church. You can put me in a jail cell. Paul taught us, you can lock me up, but I'm going to have church. I'm going to sing. I'm going to shout. I'm going to profess the goodness of God because it's not limited by people or things, but it's limited by the strength of the Holy Spirit, which is unlimited in my life. So many of us, were just wasting the strength of the Holy Spirit that is available to us because of so many things. And the last thing I need you to see is don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. There's a reason. Somebody say there's a reason. The Holy Spirit brings power in our lives for a reason. Look at Acts 1.8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, this is where we quit most of the time. This is where we have church, right? We could go, we can go, ha oh, we can just read this verse. Like when we all get back in here, 
Everybody that's online is back in the building. We're back to two services and everything's just going crazy. We could get up here and say, hey, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I put the microphone down. We just have a dance party. Everybody shout. Everybody feeling good, right? Because that's where we stop most of the time. Because now I'm going to be rich. And I'm going to conquer everybody. And I'm going to be better than everybody. And I'm, I'm going to show them because of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. That's where we stop. Now, power of the Holy Spirit comes to help us in our lives, yes, but that's not where the verse stops. Is it okay as we close out if I read the, the end of the verse? Because I think that one thing that happens too often is we get out of context, and we read partial verses, and we don't read the whole thing, so then we miss out on what God was really saying in that text. It says, you will receive power. Cool. You will receive power. You will receive power, but the reality is it doesn't really have anything to do with you. You will receive power, but it's not just about you. It says, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Hear me. Your power is not just for you. The power that the Holy Spirit wants to bring into your life is not just for you. And so many of us are wasting the power of the Holy Spirit because we're not allowing him to work through us to extend it to the world, to extend it to those around us. He gave us power, not just for us, but he gave us power so that we could go to the world and say, look how good God is. Look at what he did for me. He's not just bringing strength to me, but he can bring strength to you. He's not just healing my life, but he can heal your life. He's not just bringing hope to me, but he can bring hope to you. If the Holy Spirit can take somebody like me, if the Holy Spirit can take somebody as broken as me, with as many weaknesses as I have, I've got to tell you, you're not alone. You're not alone because what he did in my life, he's going to do for your life. What he did in my family's life, he's going to do in your family's life. The, the, the salvation that he brought us, the healing that he brought us, the restoration that he brought us, being able to overcome things that people should never have to go through. But instead, we hide behind the weakness because we're ashamed of it. Instead of going into all the earth and saying, I was weak, but now I'm strong. I didn't have power to overcome it then, but then I met a man named Jesus and he told me, that he would never leave me and he would never forsake me and he sent the Holy Spirit into my life to let me know that I'm not who I was. I'm not the names they call me still to this day. I don't care what they say. I'm not hiding behind my insecurity of what they're saying to me. But I'm here today to tell you I was that person but it's not who I am anymore. I was there, but it's not who I am anymore. Yes, I still have weaknesses. Yes, I still have to persevere and fight through. But I want you to know, you're strong in that area. And I believe that I can help bring strength to your life and expand your life. And you can help expand my life because I believe God's brought us together for a purpose. But when we draw back, when we pretend that we don't need help, because we know we need it, we're just too ashamed to ask for it. It prevents us from being able to see the true strength of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If you're in this building today, if you would stand all over this place, please. Holy Spirit said, listen, you need my help, but I also want your help. Like, oh, wait, the Holy Spirit needs, the Spirit doesn't need help, he's the Holy Spirit. No, it says, it says, you will receive power so that you can be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
God said, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit to bring strength to you so that you can spread my name to others. Don't waste the strength and the power that is available to you. Don't waste the power. Don't don't become so selfish that you're so focused on what the Holy Spirit can do for you that you forget about the person that you haven't seen in eight months because we've been quarantined and you haven't even checked on them and you don't even know that one phone call from you, one text from you could let them know they're not alone in this thing. So many times the Holy Spirit gives us a push, a leading, and we ignore it because it's inconvenient. But what would happen if we began to say, Holy Spirit, have your way in my life and show me what you want to do in the lives of others through me.